Hey guys, my name is Ariana. Welcome to my channel. I wanted to start prepping for my massive breakfast meal prep for the week for my family of five today. So come along and join me. So guys, it's the night before and I wanted to start prepping my bagels and my English muffins. And I do these sourdough. So basically you have to let it ferment the night before, but you know what you could do if you do not want to do this step, go ahead and buy some English muffins or buy some bagels, or you can also make them from yeast, but I don't do that. I just use my sourdough. So let me show you guys how I do that. And I'm going to start with the English muffins. And while this might sound complicated, it's really not. So don't doubt yourself. All we're gonna do the night before is add two cups of flour, one cup of water, and a half cup of fed sourdough starter. So that's like the bubbly kind of starter. I just fed this earlier this morning. So let's go ahead and grab our two cups of flour. And it's gonna be something similar for the bagels as well, guys, because you have to let it sit the night before in order for the grains to ferment, and that's what gives that sour taste. But also, not only the sour taste, it also has added benefits for your body because it's easier to digest and it's a lot healthier for you. Kind of obsessed with sourdough. And I find most of my sourdough recipes from Lisa at Farmhouse on Boone. She also has a YouTube channel and it's very informative. Let me grab a measuring cup for my sourdough starter. All right, so see, this is pretty bubbly. Go ahead and just dump it on in. We're gonna mix this up and then just cover it up until the morning time. And then I'm gonna get started on my bagel in a, just a minute. Okay, so this is the English muffin dough all mixed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this. You could use a tea towel. I gotta buy tea towels. I only have this blade stuff that I bought like literally two years ago so i'm trying to use it up and then i'll switch to something a little bit more eco-friendly so just cover this up put it on the side let it ferment till tomorrow morning i'm also going to start making the bagels like i just said but i also wanted to say something to you guys it's super economical to make your bakery items from home whether it's sourdough or yeast whatever you want um in the store even if it's like two dollars a pack for english muffins which it might be more now because inflation is insane it's still going to cost so much more cheaper and you can use better ingredients at home. You can use olive oil instead of seed oils. You can use organic flour instead of conventional flour. Stuff like that really, really makes a difference in your family's health and their lifestyle. So that's why I think this is important and it's frugal at the same time. So it's actually frugal to eat healthy if you're just making it from scratch. All right guys, and to prep our bagels, we are going to do four cups of flour in a stand mixer. And after you add the four cups of flour in, you're gonna to wanna to break out your sourdough starter, which is going to be all bubbly and nice. You don't want a flat starter. And you're gonna add half a cup of sourdough starter to this stand mixer with the four cups of flour. After you add those items, you're gonna to wanna to grab two teaspoons of salt. And I just use a sea salt while I'm out of my Himalayan salt or my Redmond's Real Salt. I substitute it with sea salt, add that in. Then you're going to want to add two tablespoons of honey. And, you know, you could probably even do maple syrup if you wanted to do that. So get that going in the stand mixer. Also, one cup of water needs to go in here as well. And now we're just going to knead it until it's nice and put together. And it's going to take a little bit and the dough is going to be kind of hard. So just stay on low. And after about 10 minutes of mixing, the dough should look like this and have the consistency of Play-Doh almost. And then you're going to want to cover it and leave to ferment overnight. Hey guys, it's the next day and these have been fermenting overnight. So here is our bagel dough and here is our English muffin dough. So let's get the bagel dough folded out and divided into eight pieces because this is going to make eight bagels and I will show you guys how I do that.
here are our bagels all formed and ready to go. So I'm just going to cover this with the previous plastic that I had used, or you could use a tea towel as well. All right, guys. So while we have these bagels fermenting for one more hour to get puffy, we're going to cook our English muffins and I'm going to turn these into egg and cheese breakfast sandwiches. So after we cook the English muffins, we'll let them cool a bit, slice them, add a fried egg, add some cheese on top, and then I'm going to keep them in the fridge for this week. You could also freeze them, but I think we're going to eat them in time. And also I'm going to meal prep waffles, which I am gonna throw in the freezer. And I'm also going to make blueberry oatmeal muffins. So this should be good for my family for this week. And the reason why I wanted to do this video is because I literally cannot always, I literally cannot like function in the morning. Obviously I do function, but I am definitely not a morning person. So if I can just grab something out of the fridge, out of the freezer, out of the pantry and give it to my family, that is fine and great with me. I'm sure there's other mothers just like me. Okay, so to this English muffin batter, you're going to wanna add one teaspoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of honey, and one teaspoon of salt, and mix it all together. And while, the, while we're mixing it all together, we're actually gonna preheat our cast iron skillet, and you can use any skillet that you want, just make sure it's preheated. I'm gonna put it on medium heat, and I'm going to also add a little bit of olive oil before I put the batter inside. And I'll show you guys how I do this. There's the baking soda. I'm just gonna eyeball the salt. There's the salt and a tablespoon of honey. There we go. Let me go get a spoon now. And it's gonna be pretty sticky, guys. So you're gonna have to use both hands, most likely. Okay, so this has been heating up a little bit. I am going to turn it down too low now because I do not want the bottoms of the English muffins to get burned. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of oil to this. And you're not gonna wanna add too much. It's just so they don't stick. And a preheated cast iron skillet usually is non-stick anyways. We do this carefully, that's good. All right, try to get this everywhere, best of my ability. All right, then you're going to take a little bit of the dough and you're going to put it down into the pan. And I'm gonna have to put you guys down because I don't have a stand yet. And I'll show you what it looks like though when I get it in the pan so you guys have an idea. This dough is gonna be pretty sticky. Okay, and this is how they're gonna look when they're in the pan. Again, it's still on low. And what I like to do is I like to cover it for about five minutes to let them get nice and puffy. And then we will flip them so they're browned on the other side and they'll be done. And I obviously do two batches because this pan isn't big enough for all the batter. Okay, so they're gonna look like this after a few minutes and you're just gonna take one. If I can get underneath it. And you're gonna flip. You could also, you could turn the heat up a little bit to make this go a little bit faster. You're kind of a pain in the butt to flip. That's the only thing I have against these, but they're so, so delicious. You, you know what? You, you got to make these. They're way better than store bought, bought taste and everything. Okay, guys. So when they're browned on the other side, you're going to want to just take them off the heat, of course, and put them on your serving plate. And yeah, they're completely done. And you could get them a little bit more brown if you like them like that. But honestly, these look perfect to me. And you just let them cool slightly and then you just cut, cut them in the middle just like you would with a normal English muffin and they're good to go. It's really that simple. Like when I first saw this recipe, I didn't realize how simple it would be. But it is. All right, I got my second round going and then we're going to fry up some eggs. So I'm going to slice into these so they're ready for me to top them with the egg and cheese. And I'm preheating my skillet for that. Here's my eggs while they're frying and I like to crack the yolk when we're not eating them the day of and I just put them all into a pan and then kind of just you know section them out with my spatula and after that I flip them and they're great you know it's easy to cook them all in one pan 
just make sure your skillet is preheated and make sure it has some sort of oil in it. I put butter in mine and it'll be good. What do you guys like to put on your sandwiches? I love bacon, but I didn't have any on hand. Okay, now that these are done, I'm gonna let them cool for a bit and then I'm gonna put them in a gallon plastic Ziploc bag for the moment. I am gonna try to switch over to glass at some point, but what I have is what I have for right now. So yeah, this will feed my family for one day, one breakfast. That's why we're also going to make the waffles, the bagels, and the muffins. I took a quick break to clean up my kitchen before I start with the rest of the meal prep. Hey guys, now that we're done with our sandwiches, I'm just gonna make the bagels now. So we're gonna preheat our oven to 425 degrees. We're also going to add water to this pot and we're going to boil the water to boil our bagels and then we will bake them for about 20 minutes in the oven. And when the water boils, we're gonna add a tablespoon of sugar and a tablespoon of baking soda. And while that's starting to boil, I'm going to grab my waffle iron and we're going to start mixing the batter so I can make waffles, cool them, and put them in the freezer from whenever we need them. So I have this really old waffle iron and it's not cast iron and I would really love a cast iron one in the future, but this one will do for now. I don't know if it's Teflon, it probably is, which sucks, but in the future, hopefully I'll get a cast iron one. Let me show I you guys. I think I got this at Walmart for like $10 like years ago, but it's good and it's not scratched so i'll still use that i'm going to heat that up right now our water isn't boiling yet oven is preheating bagels are rusted and they got puffy as they rusted so yours should look like this okay so for our waffles we're going to do one cup of flour and then we're going to do two teaspoons of baking powder so that's my one cup of flour two teaspoons of baking powder. And I have a tip for you guys. Find a baking powder that is non-GMO if possible and avoid aluminum. This one does not have aluminum in it, but some of them will. And I didn't realize that until recently. So you don't want to be eating aluminum. One teaspoon, two teaspoons. We are also gonna add, after those are mixed up, one cup of milk, I have whole milk here, one egg, and then we're gonna add a quarter cup of oil of your choice. All right, so now we got everything in here. We're gonna mix it together, and my water is almost boiling. So we're gonna add that tablespoon of baking soda and the tablespoon of sugar in a minute. And we're gonna start doing probably about two or three bagels at a time. And then putting them on a parchment paper lined cookie sheet, and then we'll bake them. You can also add your toppings. So let's do that first. Kinda wanna get two things going at once. if I can manage it. <laughs> That's good. All right. I'm using my spatula from now on for this for a moment. All right, and we're gonna only, it's only one minute each side. So let me see if I can move these to this. That way we can free up this baking sheet. So I'm gonna put one at a time. One, two, and um, three. Three will fit, perfect. So get those going for one minute on each side and then we'll put them on a baking rack. 
baking sheet, excuse me. All right, so this is done. One minute on each side, we're going to put them on the pan. And they're very slippery, as you guys can see. So be very careful. And some of these, we're gonna do everything seasoning on it. So let me get that out in a second. We're gonna put the rest, we're gonna put three more in here. And then they go get the seasoning ready. While these cook, one minute each side, like I said. Got my seasoning from Trader Joe's. Oven is preheated. These are simmering still. All right, so these aren't too hot, so I'm gonna take one, dump it in the seasoning, get it kind of coated the best of my ability. Put it back here. They're a little hot, so be careful. Perfect, those look so good. All right, let's flip these. And you don't wanna get it too high cause when I had it really hot, it started foaming up. I think that's because of the baking soda. So keep it at a middle temperature where it's still boiling a little bit. So I think I'm gonna make it one more everything and then the rest will, will be plain. Okay, my waffle iron is hot, so let's get this batter going. I always add too much batter, so let's add a smaller amount than I would normally do. And then it drips out on the sides and then it annoys me. <laughs> that must happen to you guys too, right? <laughs> Can't just be me. All right, shut it. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. So let those cook. The green light will turn on when it's done. These are just about done and we got two more. So this process might look a little intimidating, but it's really not. It's pretty simple to make your own bagels and absolutely delicious. Better, way better than store-bought and way cheaper. And I use organic flour and fermented them, so way better for you too. All right, so I did one more everything bagel that I thought I would do. So it's your preference, do whatever you want. I'm gonna pop these in the oven, 425, like I said, for about 20 minutes. Okay, and this first waffle is done, and of course it's not fully round, and that's perfectly fine. This is real life. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on this drying rack, or cooling rack, I should say. This isn't clothing. To let it cool down, because you want them completely cooled down before you throw them in the freezer. So, let me keep adding more batter. And like I said, this is just for a couple days this week. And my kids are younger, so I don't need that much food. So this is more, that's why I'm making four different items. So we have variety and it's more or less so we have something on hand. So I don't need to freak out and say, oh my gosh, what am I gonna make this morning? I have no idea and rush and get stressed out before we do school because we're homeschoolers. So I want stuff to be ready to go when we need it. All right, I'm gonna show you guys when those bagels are done. I will show you when my waffles are done. The sandwiches are already done. Next thing we're gonna do is our oatmeal blueberry muffins. So when I get that started, I will show you. There's another waffle, all done. I think I got enough batter for one more. So let's go over, wash this, and then we'll get our muffin mix started in this bowl. All right, so in our brand spanking new clean bowl, we're gonna add one and a quarter cups of flour. After that, we're going to add our one cup of oats. And the recipe calls for, um, what are they called? Not steel cut, rolled oats, but I only have quick oats. I've done it before, it'll be okay. One teaspoon of baking powder. Quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And then we're going to do one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. All right, now we're gonna mix well to combine. Make sure you distribute all the leaven. 
so there's no big clumps. And I'm using salted butter, butter, so I'm not gonna add any unsalted butter today. Or I'm not gonna any add any extra salt, excuse me. Fun fact, I got this Saigon cinnamon for like $2 on sale. So that was pretty nice. Okay, next thing we're gonna add is a cup of milk, which I have to go grab. We're gonna add our slightly cooled stick of butter. I'll get that in a minute, and an egg. So let me do the egg first. It's supposed to be room temperature. So mine's been sitting out for a little bit since we made the waffles. There's one egg. Let me go get the milk. Here's half a cup. Let me go get the second cup. Second set of half cup, I should say. Let me grab that butter. These are looking so good. They're not done yet. Egg, milk is already in here. Adding our butter, slightly cooled. So let's go ahead and mix these up together. And I know we're supposed to add our sugar next. And it says half a cup of honey for this recipe. And I'm gonna link the recipe down below. But I don't know if I wanna use all my honey on this recipe. So I think I am just gonna add a half a cup of sugar and I know that's refined sugar, at least it's organic. So I'm gonna have to stock up on more honey and more maple syrup. I just don't wanna use what I have on hand because like I said, it is expensive and I'm sure you guys feel the same way. It's expensive to do that. So let's use half a cup of normal sugar today. Quarter cup, half cup. Mix these in. Probably should have added that beforehand, but it'll be okay. Let me get this mixed well. I'll be right back with you guys. All right, that's all mixed, and so I'm gonna add my frozen blueberries to this. And I'm going to do, hmm, I think I'm gonna do two thirds cup. All right, so now I'm gonna mix this in. Actually, I'm gonna keep this in here because I always use it to make smoothies. Mix this up, and let me go get our muffin tin all ready to go to add the muffins into it. All right, so I'm going to grease up these muffin tins with a little bit of butter in my hand. And then we're gonna obviously add the batter into it and we're gonna bake it at 425 and I gotta check for how long we're supposed to bake this for. Um, this is carbon steel, so they aren't Teflon. And I got it from Target for about $5. So these are pretty economical. If you're trying to avoid Teflon, go ahead and go, go to Target. They have a lot of good quality items for baking and they're cheap. bagels are done so let's get them out of here and leave the oven on 425 because that's what we're gonna bake the muffins on so here are the bagels so good all right so these are gonna be at 425 for five minutes and then we're going to drop it down to 350 for the rest of the time so let's get these in the oven So these are gonna be in the oven for five minutes at 425, drop it down to 350 for another like 16 minutes. Test them out, make sure they're done in the middle and you should be golden. Okay, these are completely dry now. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in a freezer bag and set them in my freezer. So I'm all done with these bagels. So I'm basically gonna do the same thing as I'm doing everything else and put it into a plastic bag. I'm gonna store them in my bread box. And they're gonna stay good because sourdough usually stays good for a while. Probably stay good for like two weeks, but we're gonna definitely gonna eat them before then. And basically all we're gonna do is just slice them like you would, normal bagel, toast them, put some cream cheese, peanut butter, butter, whatever we want for breakfast. So this will be one of our breakfasts. And I'm really excited to eat these because they're so good. All right, guys, our muffins are fully done. So I'm going to transfer them to a cooling rack to make sure they're fully cooled before I store them.
guys so much for joining me when I did this breakfast meal prep and I plan to do more in the future more challenges more preps and cook with me's clean with me's and doing it from scratch most of the time is what I like to do so if you like this content please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video